Right, let's let's kick it off. A couple of minutes now past the hour. Um, yeah, thank you for coming to ACF Chat Fridays. It is our every other week office hours with the team. Um, I'm Ian Paulson, the product manager for ACF. We've got members of the engineering team here. We've got Matt, we've got Anthony, we've got Liam, and we've got uh, Brian from the engineering team also, and Mike from our content team. So it's quite a good um, amount of people from the ACF team yeah, we, we do these sessions every other week to try and help with um, questions, answering questions around ACF, any issues that you've come across. Um, we sometimes have specific topics uh, and we just want to, you know, open up communication uh, and try and um, use the sessions to help you and to help us um, and try and, you know, increase the ACF community, which is nice. Um, we do record the session and we stick it on YouTube so people who don't get to come to, come to the session can... Uh, benefit and watch it back and we'll do a post on the acf blog um uh, the next couple of days so we, you can catch up and i think this this session we will we're going to chat about the most recent release which is acf 625 which is the big kind of security release that we had to do um what day did we even do that was that 16th tuesday was that um it feels like a week ago it feels longer uh it's pretty pretty major release in the sense that it has patched a security vulnerability that's pretty nasty. I think it's like a 6.3 on the CVS score. Uh, but in doing so, we've had to make some changes to how ACF data, field data is rendered through the ACF shortcode, if you're using the ACF shortcode. And we've, um, we're kind of alerting to changes that are upcoming in a future version which is going to be probably ACF 627, although that's actually could, could change, uh, but it's going to be relatively soon to try and um, do the same fix to effectively the, the field function, which outputs data similar to what the shortcode is, does. So yeah, I, I think we've, we've definitely tweeted about this a lot in this session, about this session, and this is a good session to come and ask questions uh, about this release, about how it affects you if you're using um, the ACF shortcode, and obviously the field, which is a big, a big part of um, of how ACF has previously, well, uh, as always said, this is you know the field data. When you want to get the values, you can use the get field function, or you can use the field function that basically echoes or renders it without you having to put echo in front of get field. Um, but this is all about the security of uh, the, the value of that field and how we now escape the um, the value to make sure that there's no unsafe HTML in that value because due to the security vulnerability, we couldn't necessarily trust that field values hadn't been changed by um, uh, this this exploit. And so rendering it, just without any kind of uh, escaping or protection around making sure that it wasn't going to output unsafe HTML, execute things that could, you know, uh, actually an, end up with a hack site has meant that we've had to, um, by default, escape the, uh, the, the data that's coming from the shortcode, which means, for example, if you have a WYSIWYG or a text area ACF field and you're um, storing HTML content, but you're you may have put an embedded code from uh, like a third party SaaS app like HubSpot or Help Scout or Google or something like that, where you, they ask you to put this script into your your content, and so you've you've got grabbed a load of script uh, HTML a script tag, and you've stuck that in the WYSIWYG field. That is by WordPress's definition of of unsafe of HTML unsafe, and so that will now be escaped and effectively not work when it outputs if you're outputting it as a shortcode or using the acf shortcode but it's to protect against the unsafe html that is actually malicious html that could be doing stuff that really we don't want people to be doing um so that's probably not it's probably a big explanation and i'm gonna say now we've got the the chat open we've got the q a if you've got specific questions about how to perhaps um, kind of react, I guess, to this release. 
we've tried to be proactive in helping people identify if they're impacted by this release, because of course not everybody will be. If you have uh, HTML, uh, sorry, HTML stored in uh, in WYSIWYG fields or uh, text areas or anything like that, that it, and you're not using the shortcode, you know, we're, we're not gonna, you, you aren't impacted here. And we actually I now detect um, if, if you're doing something that results in a field value being escaped, which changes what it is stored as because we've done some HTML escaping to, to secure it. And if that's different, we now sort of notify you to say, look, this is happening. It's, it's probably safe, but we need you to, to do something else now to actually um, output it correctly. So we, we, we're trying to at least target the people that are impacted rather than just say to everybody, look, this is a big security fix. You may be impacted by it and kind of giving people a haystack to telling them where to find the need without telling them where the need is kind of thing. Um, so yeah, let me maybe stop talking. Uh, yeah, we got a question there in the chat about, uh, so about this only happening when using a CF short code and a question of, uh, but the escaping does not happen if we use something like the field or get field. And uh, Matt just responded that it only happens for the H HCF, uh, that's really funny, short code. He says short cake. I think that's the that's best typo uh, ever. Yeah. <laughs> but in the future we'll release, uh, 627, it will also happen with the field. So uh, get field will not be impacted by this, but the field will be impacted by this. Yeah, the, the vulnerability had definitely identified it, the ACF shortcode as a way to exploit this. And that was something that we wanted to patch straight away. The field is probably more more prominently used or more commonly used than the short codes. And so that is actually going to be a bigger change, which is why we, we don't do that escaping in uh, ACF 65 for the field. But we're now getting ahead of it to alert people that this is going to happen and tell them if they are impacted so they can get ahead of fixing this because it's not very yeah it's we do appreciate that it, it the, the nature of the sort of fast security fix has impacted people's data and and they now have to sort of make changes to their theme code or the the, the way they're doing things in the in the content of their pages or posts but the field changes are perhaps bigger so we need to try and get ahead of it we have a question yeah. here from Dominic as well. Um, he's been seeing a message in the dashboard related to the subfield being pulled in, and it looks like innocent HTML. Um, that can definitely happen. You can get some false positives, but it's really mainly um, when there's uh, characters, special characters that are getting converted to HTML entities. Um, the most common one we've seen by far is the ampersand. So if you have an ampersand in your uh, post or in your field value, it'll get converted into uh, the HTML entity version. Um, it's detailed in the blog post, but it shouldn't be have any negative effects. It'll still be rendered fine in the browser, so you can likely ignore that. And and I think we have at the bottom of the post that you can enable this behavior today. So then you can like, I what I would do is is enable it. Uh, on a like a local site or a development environment and just check to make sure that like nothing's rendering funny or that none of your content's looking strange, especially that content that you've identified that is being flagged. Yeah, David's asked a question. So for the upcoming release, are you saying that any and every instance of the field or the subfield will need to be changed to get field or get subfield? I don't I don't think that is the case because it depends uh it depends on the on the field type right i mean guys correct me if i'm wrong here because if you're certain fields aren't going to have html stored in them uh, and if you know that for sure then i don't think that's going to be an issue but yeah even if it does have html and it's not something that could be flagged as potentially unsafe html you can keep using the field or the subfield like if you just have a couple like paragraph tags maybe a heading tag or some spans or something like that um it should be fine uh generally it'll be anything that you can put in a standard wordpress post editor will still work in the field or the subfield uh it's just if you have things like script tags or iframes 
uh, things of that nature that will probably get stripped out. And then you might want to make some changes to your code. But for the majority of cases, it should be fine. And you can test it now just by quickly opting in on maybe like a development site or something like that, just to make sure that your content's still being rendered as you expect. Yeah, and I think we, we should also mention that if, if anyone's having trouble identifying what content is actually getting flagged, uh, Liam made an excellent plugin that uh, uses these kind of hooks that we're using, or these, 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 so how we're identifying the content, you can get in the middle of it and start logging things more detailed. Um, and. And that'll just put into your error logs more detail about like what the content looked like before and after so that you can get a, a diff to kind of really understand what's being changed. We obviously probably, we couldn't do this by default just because, you know, if you have a lot of content or a lot of visitors, it could be pretty intense. Yeah, I think overall with the changes to the field and the short, and the short code that's happened in 65, it's probably going to affect people i would say like a small percentage of people that perhaps have had this like we don't know if this exploit has actually happened or we've not had any reports from the, the person who found it or anything to suggest that it's actually been exploited but i think that is a very small percentage and we're obviously trying to be very cautious about how we fix these these holes um but for the majority of people they're going to if they see the notice, it's probably going to be a false positive, like the ampersand issue, uh, case that Matt said. The people that will be affected by legitimate HTML, like a script tag or an iframe, will need to kind of fix how that data is perhaps stored or outputted at, or make that special case to allow that to be outputted without escaping. But th so hopefully, the, even though there is work for people to do, potentially, if they are impacted, it's not it's not too much here it's just yeah having to sort of work through and make sure that um you know to, to check if it's a false positive or it's actually you know oh my script from hubspot for example is now not working like that's that's kind of a can be a big problem and to, to dominic's question there yeah that's that's a, a i would uh liam actually just answered it uh the question is, where do I put the add filter line? And Liam just said, I, I also just pushed up a plugin that will enable the new escaping behavior and turn off the notice. So that yeah. plugin would probably be a good way to install, activate, see the be like quickly look through your content, make sure everything looks good. And if you notice any issues, just deactivate the plugin and everything will go back to normal. Yeah. And I think it's worth saying that if you are adding just custom code to your WordPress site at all, it's best to stay clear of, them, of putting it in your themes functions.php because themes change. And as soon as you switch to another theme, you've lost all of that code that is doing a certain job for that site and should still be doing the job for the site. So we, we would recommend using a, a WordPress yeah, MU actually, plugin. Yeah, actually, Maybe. you could probably just use Liam's plugin as a as an example to build off of because that that is essentially what we're recommending is is you you have a, an isolated plugin where you add yeah. all of this logic to enable and disable these features. Yeah, yeah. So ke just keep it in a plugin rather than in the themes uh, functions. Stop PHP. Uh, okay, I'd, it's probably worth calling out. Kelly asked a question. To clarify, will this impact WYSIWYG fields when pasting of YouTube and other links that automatically create the embeds? Um, and Liam's answered, we have handled that and we have tried to, to fix that. So um, we'll remove unsafe HTML and then handle the embeds after that. So the YouTube links and everything will do the unfurling into like the proper um, embed script uh, and the iframe that they, bec they become. Uh, so that shouldn't be affected. Yeah, also with the uh, O-embed field is another field that renders iframes by default. Um, that'll continue to work with the field in the ACF shortcode. We've got the chats going good, but we've also got one in the Q&A. Is the admin warning flagging all uses of the field within the theme files or only if it detects uh, problematic contents? And yeah, I think we may have already said that, but it, it, it is only do, showing notices in the admin when we've detected that, you know, we've, we've 
had the field tried to output some uh, content and we've done the escaping and we've compared the original uh, value to the escaped value. So now the secure value. And if that has changed, that is when we, we show a notice. So yeah, it won't, uh, if anyone who's not impacted by this tool won't just get the notice to confuse them, this will only be sort of a targeted notice to say that, you know, something needs to be looked at specifically on this site. Okay, Matt, where are we at? Joe has asked. Yeah, so if you're trying to test the alerts, um, something with like a JavaScript script tag should work. Um, there's two notices, one for the ACF shortcode. That'll be a scarier red notice, letting you know that it's being escaped already. And then there's a separate notice for uh, the field and the subfield. Um, so yeah, you'll just have to render with either the shortcode or the field or the subfield in order for that notice to show up and then visit the page uh, on the front end so that those functions run and can log the notice. Okay, Have we missed anything? Everything been answered in the chat so far? I feel like all the questions that I wanted to answer have been asked. <laughs> oh, and Tim just asked in the Q&A, I can test for this locally just fine, but checking in production is a little bit more difficult. I'm thinking I might run something in production that looks in the post meta table for ACF field values that checks if there's any data stored that would be impacted by the change. So I guess you're trying to think, right, don't, don't install, don't update to 625 and get ahead of it rather than fix it before you um, update and potentially have things that aren't outputted. I, I'm not sure, do, do we think that's a good solution or is it a case of take a copy, take it, check it locally, you know, sync the database locally so you've got an exact copy and, and test it locally. And then you, and then you at least know what can be fixed and then you fix it in your theme code or whatever's doing the rendering. Yeah, I think that's probably the approach I would take is to clone down the production database. And then if you're gonna uh, run something like a script or something to check the field values in the database itself, um, then it probably would make sense to do that locally as well, just with the production database. So you're not running potentially expensive queries or anything like that. Yeah. And I think, you know, Tim, if you, if you, you could probably do that now and just check for all instances of a, the ACF shortcode in content in the post content table. And then if you, if you're not impacted by that, then you could probably update safely because we haven't obviously done any of the default um, escaping of the field yet. And that's probably going to be the more common uh, problem. So then you can at least get the notice in live or local or you know and and see what what could be impacted and get that fixed before we ship that version of acf that actually does that by default and, and in the in the blog post with that plugin that'll that'll give you more detailed error logs if you absolutely need to do that in production like turn it on for a minute and like turn it off and then check your error logs so that you can like quickly get a sample set of what what's being changed um, but I mean, you have to be very, very certain that, you know, your traffic's not going to impact mm. that. So if you have a high traffic site, I maybe wouldn't do that. It depends. Yeah. And Timmy's follow up saying, I guess I'm thinking I could test locally and see no notices, but uh, don't know that a user might have stored in production. I might have missed. I mean, are you, are you just thinking in between you sinking down and, and pulling down a copy of production into local in, in that time, somebody might have changed it. If you've got a very, very quick changing site then yeah, maybe that's that's a, a risk, but I would imagine that's quite a minimal risk. I don't know what your site, I don't know how many users are actively making changes and, and putting HTML, but I would definitely try it locally first and and probably with 99% confidence, it would, should be fine. Yeah, I mean, the other thing too is if you have a site with a lot of pages on it and uh, you need to go through and check every 
page that's on the site for the notice to be thrown. Uh, that could be time consuming, right? If you have, you know, quite a lot of pages and all that. Um, but in those cases, it's probably best just to leave, to update to 625 and then the most heavily traffic pages, if they do have unsafe HTML, should throw the notice fairly quickly. Um, and then, you know, if it takes a while, then it's at least less traffic page and probably a lower priority to address. But um, for the most majority of cases, it should be fine just in uh, terms of the HTML that will be escaped. Uh, it's mainly just if you have like iframes and uh, things like that that will cause issues. Yeah. yeah if you get... Oh, sorry, I'm okay. Oh, I was just say if you want to get really creative with it and you have your site map with all your URLs, you could probably write a, a little script to crawl through your site uh, locally so that, you know, you could trigger all of those notices possibly. Yeah. Um, and that is probably something that we should call out as well, that the notice is triggered when those values are rendered, when the field values are rendered. So if you have a site that doesn't get any traffic and, you know, the page hasn't been requested in a while, you you won't see the notice because it has to ACF has to do the job of of doing the output and then it will store the value to, to drive that notice. So I guess going back to Tim, your question to get ahead of it, you could, you, I mean, you could do this and we definitely thought about it as a way to, to let everybody know if they are impacted and search the database for your WYSIWYG or text area fields, maybe or do all fields, go and find all the post, uh, the values in post meta, do an escaping and check and and do all of that kind of stuff. We obviously didn't want to do that on everybody's site as a update routine when people update 65, because that's pretty intensive uh, and might result in probably, you know, uh, not false positives, but just a lot of things being run processes on people's sites when they didn't necessarily need to. So yeah, you, you could do that yourself. And obviously we can help if you want to like reach out to us after the call for anything that like any technical assistance, I guess, but yeah, I think the best thing to do is obviously try to try to get the site locally and try and um, just navigate around as much as possible to try and trigger the notice. Yeah, Liam makes a good point in the uh, in the chat that this release post, which is pretty detailed, it's, it's probably the most detailed release post we've done for any release even a you know a major feature release it is kind of organic and it's changing a lot so the more we've learned from people in in support channels and on twitter and the more like the guys have, have added more code or more snippets or even a plugin as liam's done to to help we've, we're adding that to this document so this is a living document and hopefully this helps but again we're very happy to try and help where we can and the best thing to do is obviously to contact the support uh, via support so what's it i think the contact page is the best way to get support there is quite a few comments on this blog post and it's getting a bit unwieldy wieldy so i would yeah recommend not perhaps leaving comments on here and just going direct to support and we can help you there um because it yeah it's quite a lot to for us to follow and yeah it doesn't it becomes less helpful for people having to sort of go through all of this and parse it Uh, any more questions? That's a good question, Dominic. With the enable ACF escaping disable notification plugin, is there any logging of problems occurring? So will you just suppress stuff with that plugin, Liam, or I know you can answer on chat rather than live, but will we? St can we still log at the same time? No, that'll disable logging as well as preventing the notifications. And the reason there is if someone's just getting a false positive on a, you know, yeah. a higher traffic site, we don't want to add the extra database query all the time. So, yeah, it stops everything. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll go back to Brian. Your question, but Liam said. Yeah, we, the, the release where we will turn this on by default for the field is sometime in February. 
uh, like possibly potentially late February. So we're trying to give people time to prepare. We do appreciate that even this release has been tricky for people. Um, but I, I hope, you know, everybody can perhaps understand where we're coming from and you can see the sort of the detailedness of the blog post and how we're trying to help get through this. But really, ultimately, we're trying to fix the security of the plugin, which is, is big. It's widely used. That's kind of pretty important to us. That's that's paramount at the moment. And, you know, that's something that we're committed to always improving and trying to, you know, trying to protect the, the websites that use ACF. So, that yeah, it's... It's it's hard when things change and and things potentially can break and you know that there's then back on the developers to to help do fixes due to the updates. But yeah, security is one thing that we it's it's hard to compromise on. And I think like the big signal if if you're thinking about is my site at risk or if you're feeling nervous is like do you have contributor contributor users like that that to me is like the one signal where I'd be like okay I should probably be checking my content because a contributor user is like not someone in your org and you know you may not know what they're up to and if they can create content then this is this is where you kind of need to weigh your um, threat level i guess yeah and and if 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 the, as you say anthony if you if you're worried about the site then the best thing to do is update 65 and the best thing to do is to even update 65 and um use the filter that we've got at the bottom which turns on the new behavior to escape the field now because i this is something that like i've been saying quite a lot recently to on twitter and, and people who are reacting to the security fix the fact that it's causing work for people is i think personally i would always prefer to have to do work as a developer to fix some stuff on the output maybe answer a client who says well why is this not working rather than have to you know try and go back over a hack site and fix a hack site and have that that hack create worse things than the work that you know we're talking about now. So yeah, if in doubt, uh, update the plugin, escape the HTML early for the field, and and know that you protected yourself against anything that could have potentially been changed in the in the data. Oh, Brian, yo, yours was less of a uh, question, more of a comment, which is good. I use a lot of shortcodes and HTML modules with Beaver Builder, but ran the plugins and all seem okay. That's good to hear because we there's definitely a load of page builders like Elementor or Beaver Builder that use the shortcode for their modules, which must be similar to Beaver Builder. And and there's a few people in our com comments on the blog post that are having issues. So we're we're in touch with the Elementor team to try and get them uh, up to speed with exactly what we've changed and how that impacts them. If their widgets or their modules utilize the ACF shortcode. I'm not sure if they'll use the field. I hope that's probably not the case, but it's probably the short code. Um, so if you are an Elemental user and you're having problems, like contact us, maybe reach out to Elementor as well, um, and we can we can try and work together to get that all fixed for you. Oh, yeah, good call out, Liam. Uh, short codes in the WYSIWYG editor will be fine too. So, for example, gravity form embeds, uh, which seem to be common, have been tested. So, nice. those should all maintain their functionality. Yeah, this is this is quite a lot of work that's gone into this. This has been it's been a busy couple of weeks. Maybe stop sharing for now, just because I don't. We scrolled over that blog post quite a lot. And feel free to unmute if you want to chime in and ask a question too. Um, I've got a, just a comment. Um, I've been searching for an Airtable to ACF uh, solution for a long time, and. I uh, just came across wpconnect.co and uh, have been using that on a site uh, for like restaurant menu work and seems to work great. So, um, and they kind of tout full ACF pro integration. Um, so I don't know if you know about that plugin or had, had any thoughts about it. What was the name again? I missed that. 
Uh, WPConnect.co. It's a French company. They do like cool. uh, connections. But in, in the Airtable thing, I've been trying to get away from using Google Sheets and importing that with WPL oh. import. And because Airtable is just such a more visual way to organize um, the data that I'm using. So this is a connection. It seems to like link directly ACF fields to the fields in your Airtable and sync them automatically. So it's awesome. Very cool. Yeah, good, good, good chat. Glad you found a what looks like pretty good solution there. Well, I've been looking for a year, so I think it's I think it just came out pretty recently. At least the um, you know full compatibility with Asia. Nice. What's um the 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 data that as you said is is better for you to edit and sort of view and. Uh, is in better in Airtable. What sort of data is that? What what type of sites are you building that has that that need for, you know, keeping the data off WordPress? I uh, you know a lot of if there's like um, kind of extensive spreadsheets and like let's say I have some little CSS um, notes in there that add C uh, that'll add a little chunk of uh, to um, to the code. So it'll turn things on and off depending on CSS. Um, but also just uh, restaurant menus. Um, I do a bunch of restaurant sites. And so um, to be able to have the client use Airtable to manage their menu and have like drop downs and multi selects and things like that for like, you know, if they want to indicate something's gluten free or vegetarian, whatever else, you know, rather than entering all that data into, uh, you know, the post type in, in WordPress, it's just an easier place for everyone to visually you know if we want to throw in a photo of the dish as well and and then all that stuff automatically populates on the website so they don't have to actually go into the site they just go into the air table and and fiddle with it yeah that's very cool yeah it's clever i like that it's good design I used to manage a uh, a website for a, a a restaurant, and oh my gosh, it was like every day there was a new request to change like a price or a name or a description or something like that. So that that seems to very much solve that problem. Yeah, anything like that that we can automate is is uh it's great, especially with you know you can run a cron job too, so it updates every ah uh, yeah every hour every day at midnight. So if they make a change, it'll you know you don't have to touch it. That's cool. I'm curious, is it, uh, so like when they update the prices, if they have like online ordering, does that all sync up too? Um, if the price is embedded in the Airtable is just a column or just a row if you know, if that's just one of the elements. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so if they, uh, you know, it's, it's still all manual because it, but I, I like having like one place where everybody can make yeah. that change and people don't have to like learn the, you know, how to, you know, log into the WordPress. Log into WordPress. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that alone. <laughs> so uh, Liam says here in chat also just wanted to note from a question above if you're escaping values, it's worth looking at the WordPress escaping functions list. For example, if you're outputting a field uh in an HTML attribute like a source attribute, you'd want to use escape attribute get field field name. And there's a full list in chat there with a link of all those functions. Yeah, Beth, sorry, I think we we missed your question in the in the chat. And if anyone else has, has got a question that we might have missed and not answered, yeah, please just sort of either post it again in chat or raise your hand and yeah, unmute and we can we can um answer it. I think I, I feel like we've covered quite a lot, which is good. And yeah, I just want to reiterate that it's unfortunate, that obviously, the the need for manual intervention from developers is there, and you know we we do feel it. We it's not fun, and um, we've tried to make it as as helpful as possible. But obviously, yeah, that the overriding thing there is is the security patch. Any more questions on the Q and A? I think they're all done. More 
which is a chat. What did we say? Is it the next chat Fridays in a couple of weeks is also can also be not, not necessarily dedicated to this, but it can be we can we can talk about this more because that might be people might be further along with fixes or, or and preparing for the future release in February that, that escapes the field by default. So we can assist more um in that session. And then we probably might be back to our normal normal sessions of just general QA and, and maybe some more um some sort of guests or maybe specific topic sessions. It'll be it'll be nice to get through these security fixes for sure. Alrighty, well, we've got, I mean, a few minutes left. Um, I haven't seen any more questions pop up. If you've got anything that's on your mind and you want us to help with before we go, then yeah, please pop it in the chat. And if not, we can wrap up early. I've got one more quick question. Um, I've got a site um, with some rogue host types, um, and I guess they might have been pulled in from a previous, maybe I built uh, built off a previous uh, build somehow in local, but um, um, wondering how best to get rid of those. Um, they don't show up in the ACF um, pro um, post type list. Um, so I can't seem to access them. I'm a designer, not a developer. So um yeah. Are they showing uh in the WordPress admin in general? So like, you know, you if it's a films as the post type, would you do you see films in the left hand menu? I do, yeah. Right. So they're re being um, registered through another means, then I guess either through code or another plugin potentially. Maybe, but they're I don't know. They just seem to be vestigial uh artifacts from uh were they created from AC the, the post types were they created from acf they may have been created from um what's the one i used to use before acf um, cbtui yeah yeah um, um and i guess i might have used because i'm uh this is a new uh block theme so i might have been using uh one of these like it's basically a food menu drink menu so it's it's something from a restaurant um theme that I had built that I was just kind of repurposing. Um, but yeah, if somehow those got, you know, into the database or something and I just can't seem to yeah. have access to remove them. Liam had a good thought here, which is um, if you those were created in CPTY, um, when ACF made custom post type functionality, we also added an import uh, setting for those. So it's mm. possible that they might have been imported and then are now in your, if you're using ACF JSON, uh, they could be in your ACF JSON. So you wouldn't necessarily see them in the ACF UI, but they could still be in the ACF JSON. Um, otherwise, I'd just check like other plugins, make sure you don't have anything that might be still registering or check for um, custom code in your theme or maybe a must use plugin or something like that that could be registering them hmm. okay it should be pretty is, is that acf json something i can access in the yeah it would be WP by content. default it would be in your wp content then in your theme there'd be a folder called acf json but okay that can be moved around but it's not usually moved so if okay. it's not in your theme i would probably look elsewhere but okay. and if it is if it's defined in custom post type UI, you could also go to the tools page in ACF and there in, in the import section of that page, you should see a, a section that says import from custom post type UI. And that will give you an idea if those are registered with CPT UI. Okay. Yeah. All right. I mean, I did, I did migration already. So, um, uh, anyway, I'll check the ACF JSON and say, uh, everything, anything else will go over my head. Yeah, that import functionality only shows if CPTUI is still activated. So but then yeah, CPTUI so... must still be for it to be even registering yeah, right? post types to show them in the left-hand menu. 
that's why I was thinking like if, if the plugins there, you should see that on the tools page. If not, maybe in a local environment, install it and just see if there's like some rogue data somehow. I, I just, I yeah, think it would, but it, it's worth I mean, I, I, I definitely got rid of CPT UI. So that and shouldn't be there. Anymore. I think would go away with it. Yeah. I'm not a hundred percent, but I'm pretty yeah, certain they would. That's a strange one. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Brian, feel free to have a have a bit more of a hunt around, and you can always drop us a line on support. And we can we can take a look if or one of the support team can take a look. All right, sounds good. Thanks. No worries. Um. Okay. Yeah. Well, we've not got any other questions in the Q and A. It's not quite nice to have a question that's not related to the security release. Um, even though we couldn't help you, Brian, right now. Sorry. Um, any, any more for any more? Here we can wrap up. Nope. All righty. Well, thanks for coming, everybody. Um, I hope that's been helpful, and I hope um, we've tried to give you some more help where, where it's been needed. Um, and as I said, please reach out to us on on support, um, and we'll be here in a couple of weeks, and we can we can do the same. So, yeah, have a good rest of or have a good weekend. See you next time. Bye.